Okay, so today my topic is about ITP and we will start with the clinical history. Uh, imagine that this patient is presenting with you with the signs and symptoms of uh, PTPI, PTPI and uh, ecchymosis and purpura. And uh, so this patient, you take a clinical history and you find that she's suffering from uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. Okay, so this is, this is case one. Now in case two, uh, in case two, uh, this this patient here, okay, so this patient here, uh, he presents with this sign and symptoms of also, there's a, this is a purpura, the TPI, ecchymosis, okay, and uh, when you take the clinical history, you find that this patient is suffering from, uh, like one week ago, he was suffering from viral disease, okay. Now, why did I why did I start with this clinical history? Because I want to emphasize on the causes of ITB. Now, it's true that ITB idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is it true? It it is true that it is idiopathic, but remember that it could be acute and chronic. Okay. Now we don't know the cause, but it may be associated with the antibody that is produced in the systemic lupus erythematosus. So in SLE, okay, they, they, this, is, this is an autoimmune disease. That's why you will find autoantibody against every, every part of the body. Anything can be affected. So maybe it will affect the platelets, okay? So when, it's, when, when there is plated against the antibody against the platelet, it will lead to ITP. Another one, this, this baby, he's, he's normal. He don't have viral disease in this case. But he have a history. Now the reason why, maybe it is because of molecular mimicry. We don't know. Maybe because no, no one is, is, there is no obvious cause for this. But it may be associated with antibody that is produced against the virus. And this antibody was mimicking the platelet antigen. And then they produce antibody against it. Okay, and why it's, uh, why he have history, why he now he don't have the viral disease, because the antibody need time to be produced, okay? Now, ITP pathophysiology, the first thing I, I want you to understand is that the antibody that is produced against the platelet, it is starting in the plasma cell that is found within the spleen. This is number one. The antibody will come and coat the platelet. Then, at the same time, the platelet and antibody complex will be eaten up by the macrophage which is found inside the spleen. So the spleen is producing antibody, the spleen is removing antibody, okay? Now, this is some detailed, uh, detailed uh, um, immunopathogenesis. So first of all, you will find the autoantibody, we don't know from where, but it might be, might be associated with the systemic lupus or associated with viral disease, for example. Now, I want to tell you about the chronic disease, which is found in adults, okay? So systemic lupus is a chronic disease, chronic autoimmune, that is found in adults. It might be associated with other also disease, okay? Not only SLE, maybe hepatitis, maybe H. pylori, okay? But, uh, so this chronic disease, you will find in more in adults. In children, usually they are viral or immunization that might cause, um, you know, your their immune system become crazy and then they start... Uh, recognizing the antigen within the platelet as foreign antigen, okay? So they will produce antibodies starting from here against the glycoprotein IBA1B, okay? Which is, if you remember, uh, it's bind to the von Willebrand factor. And also a glycoprotein, uh, sorry, antibody against uh, 2B3A, which, which promotes the aggregation of the platelets here, okay? Now, this thing, this complex will be taken up by the FC receptor, which is found within the macrophage, all right? It will be eaten up inside, lysozyme, enzymes, they will digest it, and then they will present it to the T cell, okay? So, there will be, comp it is a complex disease that involves innate and acquired immunity, because T cell is associated with acquired immunity. And this T cell, We'll, ta we'll, we'll take it. Now, T-cell, if you see here, you can see here, this is T-cell receptor that will bind to MHC2, uh, MHC2 receptor. This is MHC2 receptor on the 
macrophage. And here we have CD154, which is found within the T cell, and we have CD40, which is found within the uh, macrophage. So co-stimulation process will lead to stimulation of the T cell. T cell will come, it will give the B cell, the antibody, sorry, the antigen that is that was presenting there, it will activate it by certain interleukins, and then they will produce the antiglobulin, I mean antibody against the different antigen, and then they will fight, and the cycle will repeat itself, okay? Now, this is some causes, you can see viral infection, uh, you know, heparin, heparin sometimes can cause autoimmune, sometimes heparin will bind to the surface of the platelet here, and then it will induce the autoimmunity process. SLE and uh, post-transfusion sometimes. Um, have you ever think about, now we talked about IgG, but did you, did you think about pregnancy? IgG is the antibody that is produced and um, can be transferred through the placenta. So we have to be careful because this disease can be transmitted um, to the baby. Okay, so because the main antibody is IgG. The diagnosis, as you can see in this picture, it shows you that there is a normal cells, but you can see there are very low platelets. You can see only very low number of platelets. This is a megakaryocyte, which is a very, very big cell, precursor cell. Um, and, um, and the platelet is large, low number. And this will reflect the activity of the uh, of the of the of the bone marrow. Bone marrow will, will is it trying to produce uh, to increase the number of platelets because platelets is very low due to due to the destruction via the spleen. Uh, this is just the mechanism of action of therapy. I will I will give you the important point only. You can see the splenectomy is very important. But usually in children, they are self-limited, okay? You can only admit, admit them just to ensure that there is no bleeding, no sign and symptoms of intracranial bleeding, and other things. Uh, splenectomy, why it's effective? Because the spleen will produce the antibody. The spleen will remove the platelet-coated antibody. That's why it's effective. Effective. And uh, so you remove, you remove the source. This, this, is called, this is used for chronic case as for adults, SLE, and other things. Here you have corticosteroid because corticosteroid will impair the macrophage eating of the, of the, of the antibody coated uh, platelets. Uh, intravenous immunoglobulin is given so spleen will be like confused. What should, should I eat? I eat this intravenous immunoglobulin or I eat the platelets that is coated with antibody. So here, the platelet coated antibody will, will go away. So it will not be eaten via this mechanism. And um, you have some uh, th thrombopoietin will stimulate the uh, and mega karyocyte production and platelet production. Also, corticosteroid will enhance the production. You have some of the immunosuppressive, uh, non specific immunosuppressive like corticosteroid. As uh, as if as if your uh, brain and cyclophosphoramide. This is the biological and neurological mechanisms. Sometimes they are using antibody against CD one five four, which is found within the. Um, I, I I explained in this picture. You can see here, which is found within the T cell that's recognized within the macrophage, and also we have antibody against the CD twenty, which is found within the B cell. Okay. But still, they didn't use it. Plasmapheresis to remove the excess of the antibody, and uh, transfusion only for severe cases. And uh, just keep this in your mind that you are having self-limited um, in the babies or in the children. Uh, if you are saying children, think about seven years old or less, okay? Because if it is 20, 12 years old, for example, you might think about chronic condition, autoimmune, it's okay diseases and uh, this is all about ITB. I hope everything was clear and thank you so much.